Hello, math students. I was actually sent this problem by a high school student, not a GED student. And just to let you know before we begin, if you're one of my GED students, what I talk about here and here are going to go ahead and, and apply to the GED. But the rest of that uh, information that I'm going to go on to do this, this and this, that's all college prep. It's a little more challenging than what you'll probably see on the GED. But for the student who sent it in to me, they were given this information. f of x is equal to 8 minus 5x and they were told to find f of 4c. f of 4c is how we say that. Okay and we're going to do each one of these more and more challenging problems to build up to this level of understanding. Don't worry it won't take that long. So first let's just talk about what f of x means. So f of x is just formal what we call function notation for y. Yep. That's right, it just means y um, or a function of x because y is a function of x in, in this uh, example here. Basically, there's an x inside uh, of this expression and the answer here would be the y if you think about it that way. So if it's really stressing you out, this f of x, you can feel free anytime you see it to literally cross it out and write Y right there. I think of it like Y's first and last name, like real casual, I could just call him Y, but if I was being formal, I would say Mr. Um, function of X, I guess. <laughs> uh, but that's like the formal last name, F of X. So anyway, I'll just call it Y if it freaks me out. Okay, so now what am I saying though when I write find F of four? I'm saying find the function value, again, find Y, so function value, a.k.a. y, when x is 4. And I always have students say, you know, why couldn't you just say that? Why couldn't you just say find the function value when x is 4? And I say, because now I'm a mathematician, you guys. You know how lazy I am. I'm not trying to spell function value again and again and again. I need mathematical symbols for it. So this is my mathematical symbol for that. Find the function value when x is 4. Nice. So let's go ahead and figure that out. Let's make x be 4. So if I want to find the function value when x is 4, all I'm going to do is take that original expression I had and change any x's into 4's. That was 5x or 5 times x, and so it now becomes 5 times 4. And now this is a really simple little expression that I could just simplify. Now you could do it in your calculator if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and do it by hand. Remember, when simplifying, follow the order of operations. So I'll do multiplication before subtraction. So 5 times 4 is 20, and 8 minus 20 is negative 12. All right, nice. It was easy to find f of 4. Uh, because 4 is just a number, it was super simple. But they don't have to put a number in there, okay, guys? They could tell you to change x to whatever they want. They could even tell you to change x into another variable. That's what this next one says. This one says, find the function value when you turn x into c when x becomes c. Okay, find the function value when x becomes c. Okay, so we can do that. We can find the function value when x becomes c. We'll just take every single x we see and this time replace it with a c. Now that's going to be super simple because it's super easy to multiply 5 times c. You just get 5c. And now a lot of students are freaking out here, like what do I do? But remember, this is what separates my A students from my B students. They know when to go home, when they're done here. There's no other simplifying I can do here because I'm only allowed to combine like terms. Remember what that means. I can only add and subtract the same kinds of things. This is a plain old number. This is a C term. They cannot combine. This can't simplify any further. And so I'm done. That is the answer. Stop panicking. You know, my B students always wonder how my A students got out the door so fast when they're still working. Lots of times you guys are making up ninja math that doesn't exist to try to do things that can't be done. All right, don't do anything else with this. It's done. Okay, so then let's look at the next one. Interesting that now I have a number outside of this. So it says find four 
uh, times f of c. You might say, how do you know that was times, Kate? Well, see how the 4 is shoved up against f of c? There's nothing between them, so I know they're multiplying. So what am I saying to do in this case? I'm saying to take f of c, whatever it is, and multiply it by 4. Now, there's a couple ways you can do it, but I think the easiest way is just to find f of c first, and then whatever answer I get, I'll multiply by 4. So let's do that. Let's just find f of c. Be super clear with your notation what you're doing right now. You're finding f of c. Now, we already know that. We said if we found f of c, we'd just plug in c where we once saw x. That's super easy. Uh, but if I want to do 4 f of c, I need to take that whole thing, this whole answer I just got, and multiply it by 4. Remember how to do that. If you want to multiply 4 by an entire expression, one with more than one term like this one has, it has one term two terms, you're going to need to use parentheses. So I'm going to do 4 times all of 8 minus 5c, and the 4 will pass out here. So 4 times 8 is 32, and 4 times negative 5c is negative 20c. And once again, these are not like terms. This is a plain old number. This is a c term. I cannot combine them. And so I am done here. This won't get any simpler. Now, the only reason I wanted to show you that, this wasn't part of this problem, is, this, is so you can see what happens when the 4 is outside of the action. But in this problem that this t student was given, we don't just have 4 or C in, on the inside. Uh, we don't have the 4 on the outside, like a piece on the outside, a piece on the inside. What we have is all of 4C getting plugged into the function notation. See how that 4C is completely inside the parentheses? That entire 4C is what we're gonna to use to replace X. So if we wanna find F of 4C, we're gonna take that original expression, eight minus five, but instead of writing X, we're gonna write that entire 4C. And again, since five and x were shoved together, they're multiplying, and I'm gonna use parentheses to denote that. Okay, wonderful, and now I can simplify. Now still, I wanna start with multiplication, but the multiplication here is a little more complex. You know, it's a case of multiplication um, with uh, variables, with letters, so you have to know a little bit of algebra here, okay? But if I wanna take four C five times, let's think about it, four Cs, one, two, three, four Cs, and I do that five times, one, two, three, four, five. This is four C's five times. Now I'm gonna end up with four, eight, 12, 16, 20 C's. Or another way to think of it, five times four is 20, and 20 what, 20 C's. Wonderful. I'm gonna drop my eight, I'm gonna drop my minus. Now again, again, this is what separates my A students from my B students, guys. Don't sit here and try to make up math that doesn't exist. I can only combine like terms. This is a plain old number, also called a constant term. This is a C term. It's not a constant. They're not the same kind of thing. It cannot combine. This is as simple as it's gonna get. I am done. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.